So in order to do the update and delete process, you actually have to define a user ID on your object or on your user in order to be able to look it up by that ID to do the updates and deletes. So to do that, I'm going to do public GUID ID. So that will basically become an ID field. So then through the update process, we'll pass in an object and then we're going to find that item in our XML by that ID. So we'll do data source or data set DS equals get data set. DS dot tables users. And then we can do data table dot select. And the select gives us the ability to actually do kind of like simple querying within the data table. We can say ID equals, and then we'll do plus user dot ID. And select will return to us an array of data rows that match. <clears throat> And then the simple way to do it is do data table dot rows dot remove and then we'll remove those matches. So I'll do match here and then I'll do a for each data row match and matches. And then I'll move this up inside of the for each loop. We're essentially just removing those and then we'll save the data set. And then that will remove the row. <clears throat> so what you're expecting to find is you should only get one user or one data row back based on that user ID because that user ID should be unique. Now since we're adding an additional field, we have to go into our get and add that column. So user tables dot columns dot add and we'll add ID. <coughs> and in our add, we'll actually add one additional step here where we'll say template dot ID equals GUID dot new GUID. So we'll assign that ID in the add step prior to saving it to the XML document. And so build will be, if we go into our build, we also need to add that field there. So we'll say new row ID equals template.id. And then we have one more method. This method, so we'll get done with our privates. ID equals row that ID <clears throat> and because this is actually a GUID we're going to cast it as a GUID and that should be a comma so since we've made a schema change to our database I'm going to go ahead and jump back into or into schema change to our object um, I'm actually going to empty this out. Actually, I'll just delete it. So we'll start over with a new XML document. So we'll do build and launch. <coughs> actually, let me stop. This is our delete code. <laughs> Not our update code. Should be there. And then I also need to do remove. So here we will do user mute, user to remove. Selected item, we need to cast that item to a user. Our 
user and statement and then we'll do XML user utility <clears throat> this will use our app data source user till dot delete user user to remove and then we will um, refresh our data list Add a couple users. <clears throat> we got an invalid cast when we cast our row ID. So that is technically being stored as a string. So if I add it to my watch real fast, we see there's a GUID in there, but it's a string value. So calling this cast doesn't work because this is a string that we're trying to cast to a GUID. So you can't do an explicit cast is the issue because strings and GUIDs are different. The solution though is that the GUID class actually has some static methods and one of them is called parse. So we'll actually call GUID.parse and this wants it to be a string so we'll do to string on the field to cast it to a string and then we'll call parse on the string and that'll convert it back into a GUID. So we'll F5 that and there so our save was successful but when it went to go reload the list the reload failed because it couldn't cast the string back to a GUID. On reload we got the string back as a GUID so everything loaded so let's add a second one so we should then we'll add a third one we should be able to select Steve in the middle and hit remove and Steve gets removed from the list which also should mean that he's removed <coughs> from our XML document. So that's the delete process. <coughs> Updates are honestly very similar to deletes. Um, they're so similar that we're going to use this code. And then we can do an if check for only one match. So we can say if matches dot length equals one, we do the update. Else we can throw a new application exception, multiple matches found. And then in here, we'll say matches zero dot, I'm sorry, first name equals user dot first name. I'm going to copy this. Oops. Last name, email, and password. So we'll do last name, email, password. We don't want to update the ID because the ID needs to be constant. <coughs> and then we would simply do save data set, passing the data set back in and getting it saved back to the disk. Um, so the process here, I'm not going to go through. We actually have to create another form that was more of an edit form and then load up the object into the form, capture the changes, save them back. So it would be very similar to the add, but we also have that load step. Um, and that'll honestly just take additional time, so I won't cover it <laughs> right now. Um, but that would be the basic idea, is that you would then call the update method, pass in the updated user object, and that would save it back to the XML. <clears throat>